Hey everybody, I'm Jesse, and I welcome you to Machine Learning in iOS. In this course, you're going to get up and running with several of Apple's state-of-the-art machine learning technologies, including CoreML, CreateML, and Turi Create. You'll also learn a bit about how machine learning, ML for short, works behind the scenes. We'll be exploring ML in the context of image classification, which is one of its most widespread uses, but don't get the idea that's all ML can do. On mobile devices, there are four main data input types you can use for machine learning. The cameras are what we'll be making use of. Machine learning can analyze or augment photos and videos captured by cameras, or use the live camera feed. It can detect objects, faces, and landmarks in photos and videos, or recognize handwriting and printed text within images. You can track motion and poses, recognize gestures, understand emotional cues in photos and videos, and much more. The other three main categories of input are text, speech, and activity. For example, you can classify and analyze text written or received by the user in order to understand its meaning or sentence structure. You can convert speech into text for dictation, translation, or Siri-style instructions. And you can classify the user's activity as sensed by the device's gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer, altimeter, and GPS. The iOS SDK has all of these areas covered. A central concept of machine learning that we'll be focusing on is the model. An ML model is the algorithm that was learned by a computer to perform a certain task, plus the data needed to run that algorithm. It's called a model because it models the domain for the problem you're trying to solve. For example, take the problem of recognizing the faces of your friends in photos. The problem domain is digital photos of humans. The corresponding model will contain everything that it needs to make sense of these photos. To create the model, you first need to choose an algorithm, and then you need to train the model by showing it a lot of examples of the problem that you want it to solve. For the face recognition model, the training examples would be photos of your friends, as well as all the things you want the model to learn from those photos, such as their names. After successful training, you could say that the model contains the knowledge about the problem the machine learning algorithm managed to extract from the training examples. Once you have a trained model, you can ask it questions for which you don't yet know the answer. This is called inference, using the trained model to make predictions or draw conclusions. Given a new photo that the model has never seen before, you want it to detect your friend's faces and put the right name to the right face. If a model can make correct predictions on data that it was not trained on, we say that it generalizes well. Training models so that they make good predictions on new data is the key challenge of machine learning. The most common type of machine learning practice today is supervised learning, in which the learning process is guided by a human, in this course that'll be you, that tells the computer what it should learn and how. With supervised learning, you train the model by giving it examples to look at, such as photos of your friends, but you also tell it what those examples represent so that the model can learn to tell the difference between them. These labels tell the model what or who is actually in those photos. Supervised training always needs labeled data. The sub-area of supervised learning you'll be exploring is classification. Classification techniques predict discrete responses or categories, such as whether an email is spam or whether this is a photo of a good dog. The output of a classification model is good dog or bad dog, or spam versus no spam, or the name of one of your friends. These are the classes the model recognizes. Typical applications of classification in mobile apps are recognizing things in images or deciding whether a piece of text expresses a positive or negative sentiment. The amount of work it takes to create a good machine learning model depends on your data and the kind of answers you want from the model. An existing free model might do everything you want, in which case you just convert it to CoreML and pop it into your iOS app. Problem solved. But what if the existing model's output is different from the output you care about? In this course, you'll use a model that classifies pictures of snack food as healthy or unhealthy. There was no free-to-use model available on the web that did this, so we had to make our own. We did that by making use of what's called transfer learning. CoreML comes with a number of ready-to-use models that detect thousands of features and understand 1,000 different classes of objects. Training one of these large models from scratch requires a very large data set, a huge amount of computation, and can be expensive. So it probably wouldn't be wise to train your own model from scratch to learn the same things. Instead, to create a model for your own data set, you can take an existing pre-trained model and customize it for your data. That's transfer learning. 
You use the existing pre-trained model to extract relevant features from your own training data, and then you only do a comparably small amount of training for the classification that's specific for your use case. Transfer learning has the huge advantage of being much faster than training the whole model from scratch. Plus, your data set can be much smaller. Instead of millions of images, you can get by with a few thousand or even a few hundred. Apple provides two tools that perform transfer learning, CreateML and Turi Create. To use CreateML, you'll need to be using at least macOS 10.14 Mojave. If that describes your computer, you're ready to dive into ML.